What's up, everybody? It's Heat Override, and I'm ready to bring the pain for you and Dr. Rotor this week. Oh, yeah. Week six is in the books. How's your fantasy team? Man, it's been wild. But are you ready for another Heatastic Hard Hits review? Oh, yeah. Woo. This is going to be for week 17. Of course, you know, at the end of this podcast, I will have one of my players from my IDP article today that I highlighted for your waiver wire pickup. So you definitely want to head to Dr. Roto, use code word doc and get you a percentage off your subscription and start winning your fantasy leagues today. Oh yeah. Let's get ready to bring the pain. We're going to run it back. Yeah. Cause guess who's running it back? Well, Mr. Adams is running back to Mr. Rogers neighborhood because we just had two trades today. And we're going to talk about the first one, Devontae Adams to the Jets. It's kind of weird, too, because both the Jets and the Bills played last night, and then would they just wake up and get froggy, and all of a sudden they're just like, yeah, man, need some new receivers, man. So all of a sudden, now we have whole new teams because practically Devontae Adams goes right to the top of the Jets, and Cooper goes right to the top as the top receiver in Buffalo. Now, I know that at the same time, we're looking at what, what do they bring to the team? Well, we already know they're both veterans. So because they're both veterans, it makes it very simple. First of all, you could just take those catches away from Garrett Wilson. Of course, he's still going to have the same kind of work, the same kind of stuff he's been doing all this time. However, what's going to happen is where Mike Williams was coming up wrong, that's where Devontae Adams is going to work back in. Because Alan Lazard and Devontae Adams already did this. I mean... Who's next? Like, who, who who, from Green Bay is Mr. Rogers going to bring to the Jets? You, you need a tight end next? What, what? I don't even know what's going on anymore. But you're just wild. You're just like, you're pulling a LeBron, bro. You're just like, yo, just come to the Jets, man. It's all about bad luck and bad taste. But hey, at least we got good food. Yeah, man, I don't know. But at the same time, we're sitting here thinking about how how this can how this makes the Jets better? It overly makes the Jets better, and because of that, what's going to happen now is, of course, Garrett Wilson can play the role that he was born to play, which is just a great receiver. He doesn't have to worry about going over the deep for those long bombs. Mike Williams will still be around, but he wasn't even a thought. So right now, you're looking at Devontae Adams, and you're looking at Garrett Wilson and Alan Lazard. Brees Hall out the backfield, Conklin when they want to work him in, definitely a definitely a great ad. But it just feels like this was going to happen, and it should have happened sooner, at the beginning of the year maybe, trade. I mean, maybe this draft, you could have traded him a third-round draft for this year. But no, y'all waited, and at the same time, now we get what we get. So that being said, now we're back over to the, the Browns doing what Browns do. Trades away. They're one of their great players. Not the quarterback. That's the problem. Not the quarterback. Not the Sean Watson. Not the flop Watson. Not the flop of slop Watson. We're going to trade away Cooper. Now, that is good for my seasonal team because I have Garrett Wilson. And Garrett Wilson actually is one of those. Yeah, I'm not Garrett Wilson, but Cedric Wilson. Cedric has been playing and I've traded him for... <laughs> Cedric Tillman. Sorry, my thing's like coming down on me. It's crazy wild, man. But so anyway, with Cedric Tillman being able to be thrusted into maybe finally a starting role, he can finally, finally mature. Now, Elijah, we got Elijah Moore there. And of course, we have Jerry Judy that pushes everybody up. We have the return of Nick Chubb. So now this team is going to become more complete, more slow. They're going to applaud. They're going to use Chubb. I mean, they're going to have to wear him back in, but maybe not. Maybe he goes all AP on us, right? But at the same time, now Amari Cooper is a Buffalo Bill. And that is crazy because Josh Allen has really needed that next level receiver. Yeah, he could have that with Keon Coleman. Yeah, he could have that with Shakir, but they're technically the same player. So although they got two great tight ends, Kincaid getting the work, Knox getting the touchdown, man, who didn't see that coming for a mile away? You got James Cook, and now... You got Ray Davis going crazy. And, and so for all of that going on right now, I'm, I, I'm just, 
That was a great addition for the Buffalo Bills. It was a great addition for the Jets. I will talk about that game, but outside of that, I got to say it was a really good week in the NFL. A lot of the favorites won. The sports book were killing it. Started Thursday with Dr. Roto. You know, my betting article on Thursday was fire. Also, my betting article last night was fire. So I was just all in it. And then all of the all of the actual kind of like the the bets that I put in, just me alone. Now Lou's doing it too, right? So between me and Lou, and then Chris, and when Danger weighs in on his stuff, between all of that, we are literally been cashing every single bet practically. Yeah, we lose some, we lose some parlays, but man, we have hit some big bets, some big parlays. I guess an exact score on Thursday, which I mean anybody can do. You can play every single thing. But at the same time, it was in my article. And then you want to fly back to yesterday and just seeing the whole first quarter smash. Everything smash other than Brees, Hall, and Kincaid getting the touchdown. That's okay. Things happen. Those can be hard to predict sometimes. Brees Hall was there. Allen took a couple. Allen got a touchdown. Then there was a penalty. So again, it was one of those days to where everything was just kind of working out nice. And the week went that way for DFS. Both my articles did really well. I'll talk about that, of course, on my Ultra Contrarian. Let's say it again. Ultra Contrarian Show. And my Bring the Pain Hit Show, which I'll probably have some more stuff to go at because I, I, I've got some things I'm holding on. But I'm really happy right now to see these trades go down and finally see Devontae Adams go somewhere. Where was this last year when I had to put up with, with Jimmy Garoppolo? Freaking catwalk Jimmy G. Ugh. I mean, nobody wants to play with that dude anymore. I mean, he's on the Rams now, and I try not to even you know, acknowledge that. Yeah, I just wish he wasn't there. But anyway, that's what it is. So we have to put up with him, and that this is just a great move for Devon Adams. He finally got out of there. He finally got out of the black hole, literally the black hole, because that team is a wreck outside of Bowers right now. Quarterback-wise, they just don't get it done. Minshew, like, we thought Minshew was a good quarterback at one point, right? No, 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 we didn't think that. O'Connell doesn't really do much, but one thing that O'Connell does do is use Brock Bowers a lot. Thank you. You're making my fantasy teams look great. Anyway, let's get to it. Let's get to the hard-hitting cool picks review. I'm going to be doing Nicobe Dean of the Philadelphia Eagles, currently 6% owned. Off, fresh off of a 12 tackle game. He has 38 tackles, five and a half stuffs, and one pass defended this year for a total of 43.5 in mo- points in most IDP leagues. So that means you're getting a player that is already performing, has had his bye week, and oh man, you have no idea. Like the whole schedule, starting with the Giants, they get the Giants, they get the Cowboys who are sh- sh- shambles right now. I mean, the Rams, they get all these teams that run a lot and have like all these plays. They even get, they get the, they get the Panthers. So they have a lot of teams that just are going to either run a lot of plays, be fast paced, or they're going to run practically a lot. And it's going to give N'Kobe Dean a lot of opportunity for the rest of the season. So if you can get an over or anything like that, I'm definitely going to put a prediction out here right now. N'Kobe Dean, 110 tackles for the year. Bam! How you like that? That's what we do. That's why I'm the IDP hero, right? But man, coming into it, you can't you can't get a better linebacker right now for a team. And Philly finally st- stood up. They didn't get whooped around like they've been getting whooped all year long. They finally looked strong. And the Kobe Dean was a big part of that. He was all over that field. If you go rewatch that game, you will see what I'm talking about. And the Commanders are a good team. Like, they're coming up too. And so when you get the commanders and you get Nicobe Dean chasing Jaden Daniels around, when you get Nicobe Dean chasing this week, going to be Daniel Jones around. And you can see with the five and a half stuffs in five games that he's actually in the backfield. He's looking to stuff people. And if your league credits that, then the Nicobe Dean is the perfect waiver wire pickup for you. Have a great day, everybody, and always remember to bring the pain, and may the tackles be with you. Yeah!